Warning, today I'm going to be reviewing a video from the American Standard Dog Training. This is their most viewed video and I have a lot to say about it, but it's not easy to watch. I mean, if you care about dogs. Here for a puppy board and train program. That's already a mistake. Although it sounds great, you can send your dog to a camp, like a summer camp or something like that, and it comes back all trained. That's not how it works. The thing is that your dog might be trained with the professional trainer in that specific location, but once you get him back at your house, at your environment, all of that training might go down the drain. You, as the dog owner, need to do the training. I am Dr. Orion, a veterinarian and a veterinary behavior residency graduate. Today is the day where he's going to learn how to walk uh, much better on a leash because he pulls really bad and he's just... He's on a mission to do whatever it is he thinks he wants to do. The dog is not on any mission. Yeah, he might think he can do whatever he wants to do because he wasn't trained. He wasn't taught anything else. But he's definitely not on a mission. But it is a good thing that they're starting the training when he's still a puppy, which makes it easier. Now he is hooked up to a Herm Springer prong collar, but just hooking a dog up to a prong collar doesn't always just solve your issue. Doesn't always just solves your issues. Well, it actually never solves your issues. Prong collar or anything that was meant to hurt the dog is not a good way to train the dog. Now I know, I know many people that like this trainer or like any trainer that uses shock collars or uses prong collars or anything like that, will come and start attacking me. Yes, let's see you train a dog like this that's pulling without a prong collar. Or they will say, no, a prong collar doesn't hurt. It definitely hurts, even if you're using it correctly. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. And even when it doesn't hurt that much, the dog remembers when you used it in a painful way. So basically the dog has a constant reminder of something that hurts, which makes him afraid of you which makes him afraid all the time. So yeah, he might not show the behavior, but that's not the way to go. That's not the way to live with your dog, to have a dog that's afraid of you. And if you don't believe me, I'm gonna leave a link in the comments to a position statement on aversive training that also has uh, sites and references to scientific studies. And there are actually many more newer studies that weren't included in that one because it's already a few years old. See how far out on the line he is? You gotta ask yourself, am I walking him or is he walking me right now? I'm not asking that. You are walking together. The prong collar's getting rid of a little bit of the pulling, but he's still pulling. He's still way out front, doing whatever it is he thinks he wants to do. And that's actually very common. The prong collar by itself, if it doesn't cause enough pain, it's not gonna work. I see so many dogs that their owners are convinced that the prong collar is the only thing that will save them from having a dog pulling them, but I'm asking them, and wait, does it actually work? And they're like, no, actually no, he's still pulling even with the prong. So again, if you want the prong to work, you need to hurt the dog. If it doesn't hurt him or if he doesn't associate it with previous pain that he felt by it, it's not going to work. It's just gonna keep causing him some discomfort and actually make it a lot worse. He's not being horrible, but this is far from what we would call loose leash walking because there's nothing loose about it. <laughs> there's nothing loose about it because he doesn't know how to walk with a loose leash. So it's more technique and timing than it is uh, power, uh, but you do need to have a little bit of oomph behind it. It's more technique than power, but you need to have a little bit of oomph, meaning that you need to have power behind it. Make up your mind. And I can't stress this enough. You are not pulling the dog to catch up to you. You're simply popping it, popping the Pop. leash. It should look like this, all right? Boom. So the line must be slack before you pop it. Did you notice how while he was demonstrating the popping, he was actually pulling on the dog's neck, the dog is so confused, doesn't know what to do. So he goes to his default, probably the only or one of the only cues that he knows and sits down. Kind of like, I don't know what to do. Someone is hurting me. I'm going to sit down. Hopefully that will stop that pulling. That will stop that popping. 
I'll show you how you can ease them into it. And that's gonna be give them a little bit of pop like this. And, and let them know, hey, if you come to me, when you feel a pop and you come to me, you'll get paid. It's, it's kind of a way you'd have to do a ton of reps of that. So you have to do a tons of reps, meaning you have to hurt your dog many times before you can actually get results. I keep hearing people saying that, no, with the prong collar, you don't need, you'd only need to do it like once or twice and that's it. Well, apparently it's not, even with a prong collar. I am all for reinforcing the dog coming to you or walking with a loose leash next to you. That's a good thing. But when you do both things, hurting the dog and then giving him a treat, many times it actually causes much more confusion and can make it even worse. The dog doesn't really know what to do. But it's still not quite corrective. That's not correcting him. That's just a little tap on the shoulder saying, hey, hey, when you feel this, if you come to me, there's food. If it's not correcting him or in another word, punishing him, then why use a prong collar? Why not use a regular collar? Why not just call the dog to come to you and give him the treat for coming to you? Why do you have to use a prong? If you hang out next to me, you get paid. Yes, it helps if yeah. the dog's hungry, helps if you have high value treats. This is just kibble. Yeah, I fully agree with that. That's actually the way to go. This is how you train a dog to walk next to you. But eventually down the road, I don't wanna have to have treats on me just to go for a walk. So you prefer not giving the dog treats when you have to go on a walk, but you're fine with keep punishing the dog and having the prong collar on the dog all the time. Why is that better? Also, when you do a reward-based training, you actually don't need to have treats on you all the time. Usually once the dog knows the behavior, he knows the behavior. You don't need to always reinforce it. The same as like maybe not having to always punish the dog. The big difference is that when the dog is motivated by avoiding the punishment, he's in stress. When the dog is motivated by receiving a reward, he's happy. Again, I'm easing him into it, but eventually we're gonna uh, give him uh, what we would call the hammer stroke. I'm confused. If it worked so well with the tap on the shoulder, like he called it, with the little pop that's not corrective, why hitting him with a hammer? Why doing a hammer stroke? Oh my God, it's not correction. It's just plain hurting the dog. Um, typically, I, I like to get a little, hey, that, that means message was delivered. Good boy. What? He basically said that he liked hurting the dog. Oh man, poor dog, and the dog doesn't even understand why he's being punished. I don't want to be standing here looking at him. I just want him to, in, in his mind, go, ow, that hurt, what was it? Oh man, the guy's walking the other way. Yeah, that's, that's about what the dog will be thinking. Like, ow, that hurts, why did the guy hurt me? You think that the dog doesn't know that it's you that's hurting him? Oh, he definitely does. It's not about the quantity of reps on this, it's the, it's the quality. Here comes another one. This one's gonna be a little more significant. It hurts me to watch it. I can't, I can't believe how people still do these things when we know that that's not the way to go. We have science that shows it. We know that punishment can make things worse. It will only teach the dog that if you're there, he might be punished and that he should hide all of those behaviors that he's being punished for doing. And then, for example, if there's, I don't know, a, a person or a dog that scares him, he might not pull, he might not lunge towards the, that person, but the second that the person is very close to him, he'll bite him without any warning because he learned that he shouldn't show those behaviors. I know that hurts some of your feelings at home. Trust me when I tell you, this big boy will survive. Yes, so what? You can get shot and survive. Does that mean that people need to shoot each other? And yeah, although it does hurt my feeling in some way, it hurts my feeling because I have empathy for the dog. Did you hear about it? Empathy? I'd rather do it quick like Band-Aid and get it over with than be out here doing a hundred U-turns. Yeah, only it's not quick like a Band-Aid because Band-Aid you do only once. Good boy. 
you see the dog doesn't know what to do when he's punishing him. So he goes to his default behavior, which is sitting down. And once he's sitting down, he reinforces him. So what is the dog learning? That every time he's being punished, he should sit down. Will that help you walk him? And yeah, you may argue, oh, he's tired. That's why he's not pulling. Maybe. Another reason is that he's scared. He's just scared of you. He doesn't know what to do. Because if he walks too fast, you pull him. If he's walking normally and you decide to do your U-turns, you hurt him. If he were to target lock, if he were to do something he's not supposed to do, um, before he even thinks about doing something silly, I'll give a little pop on the leash. What does that pop look like? It's as if you're holding a hammer in your hand and nailing a nail into a wall somewhere here, somewhere in this range, anywhere from a one to a 10. Again with the hammer, dude, I think you picked the wrong profession. You should be in construction. Next step would be to pair what we've done with the sudden stops and the U-turns and the reminders. Pair that classically conditioned the same concept with an e-collar. Oh, awesome. Yeah, well, it makes sense that he will also use e-collars. Also makes sense that he doesn't even know the terminology because what he's doing is not classical conditioning. It's actually operant conditioning. If you didn't like what I did, uh, call 1-800-PETA. Oh, <laughs> so funny. I'm not trying to play some BS like uh, Zach George does and six weeks later, the dog's still pulling as bad if not worse than when the day we started. Oh, so you're criticizing a different dog trainer that doesn't do the same techniques as you're doing without even knowing if whatever he did worked or didn't work. Well, karma is a bitch. Now I'm reviewing your techniques. No, we're gonna fix this in literally five, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, you're not gonna be fixing anything because the dog doesn't need fixing. All he needs is teaching. All he needs is instructing. It's not that hard to train a dog not to pull on the leash. And there's so many good dog trainers on YouTube that will show you how. For example, Zach George that he doesn't like, or Kiko Pop, and many, many more. Check out that position statement that I mentioned. And if you want to see me reviewing Zach George's video, check this out.